Is it worth changing your own car tires? So I've got this tool here, quite cheap on eBay, 45 pounds. Is it worth buying? Is it worth the effort of changing tires yourself? Relatively cheap compared to the price of uh, changing and balancing a lot of tires. I had four tires to do that came with uh, Project Car. And what with the coronavirus lockdown at the moment, it's difficult to get out to a garage to get them changed. So I thought I'd invest in a tool, people are still delivering. And I'm going to show the pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages of changing tyres yourself. There is an, a definite uh, advantage in that you can spend more time cleaning up the edge of the uh, wheel. In this case, uh, the alloy is uh, quite rough on the edges, had a slow leak in it. It's got a little bit of alloy corrosion, we'll see close up in a minute. Uh, doing it yourself, you could spend good, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes cleaning it up. Um, paint over the corroded alloy to make sure it seals properly make sure you use some proper tire sealant to seal it as well to get a good seal and also seal around the valve that people often don't do so that is one definite advantage you can probably do a better job because you spend more time on it they just do it quickly in a tire shop the big disadvantage you've got to be careful of is you can end up wrecking your alloy wheel you'll scratch all the paint off around the edge because this relatively cheap tool uh, made in China, it's a very rough cast and uh, if you just use it without any additional protection it will rip off the paint. Uh, I've put an additional piece of plastic on there to try and protect the alloy that we'll see when I'm doing it uh, in a minute. I'm going to go through those advantages and disadvantages and uh, hopefully also come up with a few tips to help you out if you do it yourself. So keep watching. This is the kit of parts you get with your tyre changer. So 46 pounds on eBay. As always, seed links in the video description. I also picked up on eBay this bead sealer, bead sealer and repair, which is quite handy because first of all, it's black, matches the tire and comes with a brush on the end as well. Once you've assembled your tool, try and mount it onto the floor that you've got. Could use a large sheet of wood, I suppose, to screw it onto. But here I've used my masonry drill, drilled into the concrete floor, put in some plugs and uh, I've just used uh, long wood screws in this case, seems to hold it firmly enough. That's not going anywhere, but use whatever you've got. To remove the tyre from the wheel, obviously you've got to let the air out of it, but let's just get it in position. Where that little notch is, is where our tyre needs to be, but to protect the alloy wheel, I've put a bit of old carpet over it as well and start letting the air out. Use a little screwdriver or anything you've got handy just to press down on the pin. Takes a little while. Keep letting the air out until the hissing stopped. Then set up your machine. So this saddle sits on the tire. The angle is a bit uh, critical. You have to experiment with that. Get some soapy water for lubrication. That's just detergent, washing up liquid and water. Uh, this pole goes into here. And uh, you have to um, play with the adjustment of the holes because uh, what can easily happen is this saddle can slip backwards that way, uh, which doesn't do a lot of good. Um, something like that sort of angle. Often quite difficult to break the seal on these and as you're squashing the tyre it's uh, quite useful. Start letting a bit more air out as well because the any air pressure will of course uh, resist you breaking the seal and pushing off the rim. And what you'll have to do probably is uh, go around a couple of places around here probably a quarter way around the tyre until you can break that seal of the tyre on the rim. I think there's enough air out. We'll move that round a little bit. Just a small amount. Do that again. If you're going to reuse the tyre, you want to do this gradually. You don't want to distort the edge of the tyre too much to twist it out of shape, damage it. If you're chucking the tyre away, it doesn't really matter, of course. I think it's starting to come. Move back the other way. 
probably a good idea to stay out of the way of the valve in case your machine knocks that off there we go that's broken the seal then let's just move this out of the way just make sure it's released all the way around which you can push with your fingers now the reason we do it from the face of the alloy wheel as you might notice on this wheel uh, on the face side there's a bigger drop uh, goes deeper sooner so uh, the tire has to come off and go on uh, from this side of the alloy wheel and you have to release it from this side as well because it's a shorter distance to go uh, until the diameter drops off uh, so once we've got one side released turn it over do exactly the same on the other side of course this time it is a little bit easier because you haven't got air pressure resisting you often stuck on quite well because of the bead sealer that people use which ends up being a bit glue like there we go that's that one off and then if you can just push with your fingers to get the rest of it off if it's still stiff use the tool to go around the circumference of the tire there we go make sure it's not stuck anywhere that again okay next stage is to prise the tire so next the wheel. position our wheel and tire on the machine I have to push the center cap out which I've forgotten so I'll just push that out while we put it on and then this little rod that pokes up a bit awkward but we have to get that through the wheel stud hole A little useful tip is get one of these nylon scouring pads to protect your wheel from the tool when it gets tightened down, which we have to do now. This goes on top. Just make sure you don't get any metal to alloy contact, which would uh, take off the paint. Doesn't have to be too tight, this one. Now it just keeps that fairly firm, like so. Uh, so a couple of tips here. I've ground off the rough metal on this tool. I've actually done it both ends. Come to that later. And as you can probably see, I've covered it with a piece of plastic. Uh, this was the sort of scraper pad that comes with uh, uh, cans or tins of um, car body filler. Uh, heated it with a hot air gun, blowtorch, a hair dryer, whatever you've got. Clamped it with a jubilee clip and uh, has a nice bit of plastic or nylon whatever you've got between the rough metal and the alloy that protects the alloy done the same here and that means when you jam the bar in between the tire and the alloy get the plastic in between and that will stop you from scraping the paint off so your first job is to uh, find a little gap there get your tool in and let's just explain which way around this lip of the tool goes on the tire so the tire edge sits there drop that in like so now the other end of the tire you want to push down into the, the bit of the alloy that's the smallest uh, diameter or circumference and then that allow you to pull up the opposite edge uh, make sure your bar stays on and your plastic stays between the tool and the alloy wheel uh, then you um, should be able to just pull it around and eventually this edge of the tire will catch on the on the alloy and stay where it is and you'll pull the other end out see that working probably go about halfway around and the tire should then pop off oh I have to 
go all the way around on that one, like so. So the other thing I did was also to lubricate the edge of the tar with a bit of our soapy water, spray on, go around the edge, just to help the tool move a little bit easier. Uh, next, we've got to remove the other edge of the tire from the wheel. So it all comes off uh, this face. What you've got to do is lift up the tire and have this bottom edge in that smallest diameter section of the alloy wheel. And a little tip is to use something like this just to prop it up while you do that. Let's prop it up there. Then we can just lift the other side and that stays higher up and the bottom edge of the tire is in that smallest diameter section. So next we have to lift up the tire, push our rod down till the tire gets down to that edge of the end of the tool. Pull it up and I think I'll just switch to body mine mounted camera while we look at this. There's our bar in position, the tire up against the edge of the end of the bar. And then what we've got to do is slowly lever it round, making sure our plastic stays in position. And I think we need a bit more lubrication. Let's just do that. Like so. Get that out of the way now and the tyres now separated from the alloy wheel. So this is pretty typical of what you will find uh, on an old car. This is uh, about 17 years old, the car this came from. Uh, generally the alloy is okay, uh, the surface of it looks good. But if you look closely on the little spots like here, and you can actually feel it with your finger, very rough, and you can see the paint has bubbled up that's the alloy oxidizing, corroding underneath. Probably gets a little bit of moisture or water in there. And of course, where it's a very rough surface, uh, the tire is going to have difficulty sealing, even with a bead sealer on it. Uh, the other issue is where obviously bead sealer has been used before. You've got remnants of it here, leaving very lumpy surface. And uh, yes, you could just rub it off quickly with a wire brush, which is what most tire shops do. Um, but really, there's two things you want to do. You want to scrape down that uh, paint surface with a bit of sandpaper, or in this case, I'm just going to scratch off that loose paint with a file. Not the prettiest way of uh, doing it, but it is the quickest. And I'll use a bit of sandpaper as well. See how powdery it is underneath. Uh, probably didn't help having this uh, tap on weight at the side which I personally hate because it cuts into the uh, paint or lacquer covering your alloy and uh, can start off corrosion let's get that off yeah, you can see the corrosion extends underneath same on the other one paint's been knocked off Try not to make it even worse. Uh, there are dedicated tools for removing those tap on weights, but I found just some pliers does a good enough job. So remove the loose paint. As I say, sand off the remainder with a bit of sandpaper. Try and get it as smooth as you can. And then to stop it coming back, we want to spray it preferably or paint it with a brush if you uh, haven't got a spray gun. Or oh, don't want to bother. It doesn't have to be super smooth because we are going to put some bead seal on it. Really just want to stop that corrosion from coming back. I've got a bit of uh, one pack etch primer I'm going to use, which is quite good for bonding onto metals. You can similarly use uh, all sorts of different uh, primers. That's one for aluminium from Hammerite. Probably doesn't matter too much what you use. Once you've uh, scraped or sanded off the loose paint and the corrosion, you also want to remove some of the previous bead sealer. Now, uh, white spirit is actually quite good for that because I think the uh, bead sealer is some sort of uh, hydrocarbon based sealer and white spirit dissolves it off. 
as you can see it's starting to happen there and that gives a nice smooth finish for putting your tire on and for putting some more feed sealer on so take your time over doing this look for any rough spots sand them down if necessary spray them or paint them up preferably spraying if you've got the time and the equipment uh, if you do spray it or paint it leave it a day before you try fitting the tire you'll probably just smear off all of that paint and get a nice smooth finish and this is your big advantage of doing it yourself because you can uh, clean it properly and uh, afford to leave it a day before refitting the tyre. So uh, I just ordered today a tyre balancer as well, which I managed to get on eBay for just under £50 delivered. Some stick-on weights for about £10. Uh, so you need to have a few tyres balanced to pay for itself. But I know time, some tyre shops that will probably charge about £15 a tyre for changing the tyre over and balancing it. And I've got four tyres here, so that's uh, 60 quid. We're nearly up to the price of the tools, so um, it's very quickly going to pay for itself. Got another car with a very slow puncture as well, which needs looking at. Probably a similar thing, corrosion around the rim. So you can see how clean it's looking, see where the paint is corroded. Just need to finish that off. On this third wheel I'm doing, it had heavy corrosion where the tap on weights were positioned. I've just pulled them off. Here were the tabs, one there and one there. There was heavy corrosion going all the way through onto the inside of the wheel. Uh, the corrosion I've just started to scrape off, but it was really heavy around here, which is why this uh, wheel and tire was leaking air. So you can see how, or so you can see why it's such a bad idea to have tap on weights. It should never be used on alloys. Yes, yeah, another advantage of doing it yourself, because I have, have found going to tire shops, you say can you put stick on weights on and it comes out and it's got these knock on weights and end up damaging your wheel. So if you can, sand down that corrosion and clean it up something like this. This was a couple of bad spots for corrosion, again due to those tap on weights. Three spots. Here's a rough bit of sandpaper. So next for getting the tyre back on the wheel, the key thing is uh, lubrication uh, with soapy water. Uh, this time I'm going to put it on a sponge because I don't want to get water inside the wheel. Not a good idea. Uh, might be good for corrosion. So you want to lubricate it where the tyre is going to come in contact with the wheel. So obviously first we're going to push over that top edge and the bottom part of the tire is going to get in contact so we'll lubricate those both up without getting water in now i have found although you can use the tool to fit this first edge uh, if it's sufficiently well lubricated you can with sufficient amount of weight a little bit twisting often get it completely on the wheel Like so. If you can't manage that, then that last little edge, use the tool, again lubricate up the edge, use your piece of plastic or just hold it underneath, jam it under and lever it over to get that last edge over. Now I'm fitting this top edge, again lubrication is the key. This time we have to lubricate on the underside of the tyre because that's the bit that's going to come in contact with the wheel. Uh, try and do it before it dries out as well. Now I have used this end of the tool, some people recommend, recommend using that end of the tool. Basically this lip goes on the wheel like that, the edge of the tyre comes up here, uh, you lift it up slightly, have the other end popped into the wheel and uh, gradually start moving around. Um, you can do that. In fact, so no, I'll start again. So some people like to use this edge of the tool. Um, so this edge hooks under the alloy. This edge hooks 
on the slight recess on the tool and uh, I'm not going to do too much of it because what I don't want to do is wreck my alloy because this cheap tool has very very rough metal on it. I could try and get the plastic in there at the same time. Um, and it's possible, you can go all the way around doing that, holding this edge to uh, keep it from slipping. Pull it all the way around. You have to have a slight angle like that and the tool tends to uh, try to uh, want to twist and quite often it will pop out, again risking damaging your alloy. Uh, so instead, um, I found it better is uh, to use this end to um, slide it. Let's do this way around so you can see. Slide it with a piece of plastic. Piece of plastic here. Piece of plastic between the alloy and the tire, and then slide your tool in and lever it up, and uh, do that a few times going around. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, personally, I found that's the uh, easiest way of doing it for me. Um, and because you're doing it in stages, you know, very little slipping involved, then uh, you're less likely to damage the alloy, which is very critical. Even steel wheels, you don't really want to damage because uh, take the paint off, that can lead to rust, same thing, corrosion. All right, let's lubricate a little bit of the wheel. Should be able to find you can get a lot of the wheel on if you push hard enough because this rubber is not sticking too much to the wheel. Uh, you need to make sure the other end of the tyre gets down in the recess otherwise it won't go on. And the neon sometimes helps as well. Hard doing it. Eventually, you get to a point where it won't go anymore. I've only got that section then to lever on. So, yeah, a piece of plastic. soapy water on our plastic as well, a little bit on the end, shake off any excess, slide that between the alloy and the tyre and then we can push forward the tool without risking damaging the alloy which is quite nice and then we can get one extra bit of edge over and you can move to the next bit along do the same again. Keep pressing the tyre into the drop down bit of the alloy or the narrowest diameter bit of the alloy. Watch out that doesn't slip around too much. Might also be able to uh, move this round a little bit like so and then do a bit of levering. Sometimes the tool will come out, sometimes a piece of plastic will get jammed in. Uh, you get the idea. If you can take your time to make sure the rod stays in properly, then you should end up with very little damage, and no damage hopefully, to the alloy. Like a lot of jobs, you need a bit of patience. And watch out you don't lose the piece of plastic inside your tyre as well. Right, one more bit to do. Not too much more to go now. Bit. 
and it's on a little bit. When it's on just that amount, you can then just put your knee on it and push it in. And then because we, we used a bit of uh, water-based lubricant, there is a uh, dedicated uh, tyre lube you can use for helping with this, but those seem to be water-based as well. And what I don't want to do is leave any water inside the alloy or steel wheel, which will uh, lead to corrosion, rust. So we'll give it a good clean out now. A bit of tissue. Check the other side as well. And next stage is put on our bead sealer, which is not essential if your wheel is in good condition. And your tire is in good condition, you should get a good seal between the tire and the wheel. So these wheels I did ooh, about 15, 20 years ago or something, with no bead sealer. Uh, just completely restored, painted, and they don't leak at all. So next to put the bead sealer on, we want to keep the tire away from the edge of the rim. One last little clean up all the way around and try and have the other side positioned at the same time. So one bit is off and uh, just this other bit needs pushing away from the rim. So we'll put it on the floor and just push that round. Keep it all nice and even. And the other side is still away from the rim as well. So uh, the reason for having both sides away at the same time is when we've got our bead sealer on, this particular bead sealer, hydrocarbon based, is uh, a very quick drying one. So we want to put it on quickly and then inflate the tyre and uh, do that before the stuff dries. It does actually come with a brush for applying inside the lid really gooey and you could just brush in but actually the critical bit for sealing is actually uh, just inside the edge here so I found it easier just to use your finger obviously with a rubber glove dip it in the pot put it on quickly it doesn't really matter if you make a bit of a mess here because uh, it does rub off quite easily. Do both sides and then we can inflate the tyre. So next we've got to inflate the tyre. You do need uh, an airline for this because you need uh, quite a rapid outflow of air. I suppose you could take it to your local garage, do on a forecourt I suppose. Uh, pump it up with a lot and you'll see the tyre start to move out. If it doesn't, just shift it around a little bit until you start to get a seal. And as you could hear there, when it finally flips into position, you get a big bang, like so. And it'll be noticeable that it uh, is sitting around the rim. Check the other side as well. Uh, pump it up to the maximum tyre pressure I'd recommend, which for these ones is uh, 44. I'm going to pump it up to 40 to uh, push all that bead sealer into place nicely before taking it back down to the correct pressure. And that's the tyre fitted. All we've got to do is wipe away a bit of that bead sealer. So just using a rag, saves leaving any tissue residue. As you can see, the bead sealer rubs off very easily because it dries so quick. It uh, rubs away dry as well. And uh, that's the tyre fitted. Uh, if you've got a tyre balancer, uh, next job is to balance it. I'd recommend using stick-on weights. Save damaging your alloys, as we saw earlier. And that's it. Just to make sure you haven't got any leaks, use your water spray. Test around the valve seat first, see if you've got any bubbles. We haven't. Then lay it flat. Squirt some water all the way around the edge, with both sides, and check around the air bubbles coming out. This solution is a little bit too uh, soapy, a little bit too bubbly actually. 
it's uh, easier to spot very small leaks if you've got uh, probably mostly water, a very, very tiny amount of detergent in it. Uh, it's easier to spot the bubbles in. Uh, with this strength of detergent, you can see you've got a lot of bubbles and you just got to watch out for ones growing. So that's how to remove and fit your own wheels. Uh, I wouldn't always recommend it. Uh, this time it's quite useful because of the coronavirus lockdown and I had uh, four tyres to change over. Um, so let's just revisit the pros and cons of that exercise. So um, there's actually more pros than cons, more advantages than disadvantages. Um, going through them, we've got more time doing it yourself. You've got more time to clean and fix the wheel to get a better, longer lasting seal. Uh, number two, you can take more care of your tyre as you have the time. Number three, there's a little cost on future tyre changes. And you can save, I guess that's number four, you can save money on buying tyres direct unfitted. And um, doing it yourself, you also have that time gap in between removing the tyre from the wheel. And then you've got time to uh, clean and respray the wheel, fixing the corrosion. Disadvantages, cons. Uh, it can be easy to damage your alloy wheel unless you're quite patient, quite careful with that extra protection that we showed. Uh, it does take a fair bit of time and effort and you have to obviously spend some time and some cash for the tools and if you're balancing it yourself, some weights as well. A few tips that um, I've discovered. Use a piece of plastic to avoid that wheel damage. I clamped on also a piece of plastic onto the end of the tool as well as used a separate piece of plastic between the alloy and the tyre. That very much avoided damaging the alloy with that rough edge of the tool. When you're removing that last edge of the tyre, it's useful to prop up the tyre into the uh, small diameter recess. I used a roll of tissue paper. Uh, that eases getting off the last edge. Once you've uh, exposed the wheel, then scrape, sand, and repaint the corroded areas on the wheel. It's quite useful having some white spirit to clean off the previous bead sealer. And you need to do all that to get a good seal. Uh, if you're still left with rough edges and you haven't repainted it or sanded it, then use bead sealer to get a good seal. Use plenty of lubricant, soap and water when assembling, but clean off the water so that you don't leave any water in the wheel, which can lead to corrosion. And if you're doing balancing yourself, I would well recommend not using tap-on weights. Use those sticker ones instead, the tap-on weights as we've seen in some bits of the video, lead to damage to the paint of the alloy, uh, corrosion, and finally it starts leaking. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope some of those uh, tips and uh, pros and cons and techniques are useful to somebody if you have a go. Um, it's not something that I'd want to do a lot myself, but will be doing in the future. And I think you can probably get a better job of sealing the tyre on the wheel. If you also want to balance the wheels yourself, then you want one of these manual tyre balancing machines if you want to do it cheaply. These are around 50 pounds, UK pounds. Uh, quite a solid um, little machine. Comes in these two parts. So it has a pin in the top, which uh, has to go in that little recess part right in the middle. Uh, it's quite easy to get it uh, not in that recess, in which case, of course, it's going to be off balance. Uh, so you have to feel, when you put it on, just lift it up slightly and make sure it feels like it's going down into that recess as you move it left and right, up and down. Then you'll be sure you're actually in that recess. And then check for the calibration of the machine by looking at that uh, bubble, making sure it's in the middle. If it's not, adjust these three screws to pull this bubble section down or to raise it up. Some people report that these self-tapping screws are um, not very stable and you can strip the threads. Basically you just don't go mad with it, don't over tighten it because uh, then it will strip it. Um, back them off or tighten them up as far as you can go until you get a good balance. Uh, maybe turn it around a few times, check it's consistent as well. When you put the wheel on make sure that the centre part of the wheel goes all the way down and rests on this uh, centre portion of the tool. This outer section should um, compress with the weight of the wheel and the tyre. Just push that down like so. 
Uh, if it doesn't, if you've got a light wheel, then you might need to uh, remove a couple of these springs by dismantling the machine. But on my Freelander wheels and tyres, they were heavy enough that it went all the way down and settled properly. And basically the idea of this cone is it centralises the wheel and tyre around the machine, which of course you need to do in order to balance it. Then you put the tyre and the wheel on the machine and check for the balancing by again looking at this bubble. So the accuracy of your balance will be down to how accurately you can tell whether that bubble is bang in the middle of the circle, which at the moment it is pretty much perfect. It's not hugely sensitive, this balancing machine. So on the side here, uh, I've got 50 grams of weight, roughly where it's gonna go, because I'm gonna use stick-on weights, which are gonna be stuck on the, uh, the inside of the wheel, right at the center position. And if I take this uh, 50 gram weight on and off, you'll see the difference in the bubble. It's actually surprisingly small. So just remove it. And you can see there's just a slight shift to the left there of the bubble. Back on again, and after it stopped wobbling, near enough centred again. Uh, 50 grams of weight, that's a reasonable weight, so it just shows the sensitivity of the machine. Um, probably dynamic balancing on one of these rotating machines, the modern machines, is probably more accurate, but uh, this is, I guess, good enough for uh, at least the first balance and just see how it goes with driving the car. Uh, after all, they used to use these manual balancing machines years ago, and that's all they had. So it's better than nothing. Once you've found what sort of weight will balance the wheel, then it's just a matter of sticking it on, use a bit of uh, white spirit or methylated spirit to clean the inside of the tyre, make sure it's uh, grease and mud free, and then stick on your weights. So here's a box of weights I got from eBay for about 10 or 12 pounds. And it's a full box of stick-on weights, two layers, and each one is, uh, I think it was about 60 grams or something, let's have a look, 20, 30, 40, yep, 60 grams, um, I think I was just made out of iron, and uh, of course you could build them up in layers for, for more weight, so just, just cut off what sort of weight you want, strip off the uh, backing layer, and stick it in place and then of course check your uh, tyre balance again. You probably want to rotate the wheel a few times, maybe take the wheel on and off the machine just to see how consistent the measurement is and uh, that's how to do balancing of the wheel yourself. Thanks for watching, bye!